Hello dear students, in trick number 254, I am going to take up a very important theorem for class 10 students. Now this is the theorem that the square root of any prime number is always irrational. Now we need to prove that square root of 3, I am taking 3 as an example, but the question can be molded into any number, any prime number which comes in the square root. So let us try and prove that root 3 is irrational. Now for this we make use of the contradiction method and the proof starts by assuming that root 3 is rational. So if we assume any number as rational, let root 3 be rational, then that number can be expressed in the form of p upon q and there is a condition associated with this where p and q are co-prime integers. Now co-prime integers, I will just tell you what does it uh, the, what is the meaning of co-prime and q cannot be equal to 0. Now obviously the denominator cannot be 0 and p and q are co-prime. The condition of two numbers being co-prime is there they is that they do not have any common factor between them. So if p and q are co-prime then the highest common factor of p and q is always 1. That means there is no common factor between p and q other than 1. Obviously 1 is a factor of every number. So this is the condition and very important part of this theorem because without this condition the proof cannot be completed. Now just cross multiply this. See we have p equal to root 3 into q and if I want to remove this root 3 from here, I just square both sides and on squaring I get p square equal to 3 q square. So p becomes p square, root 3 becomes 3 and q becomes q square. Now in this equation, 3 is a factor of p square. So that implies 3 divides p square and whenever a number divides the square of any integer then it divides the base that means this number p also. So 3 divides p. Now this is the first part of the theorem. What we have done is we have cross multiplied this and by squaring we have removed this square root sign. And then if 3 is a factor of this p square because p square is expressed as 3 into q square. So 3 into anything. So 3 becomes a factor. So 3 divides p square. So 3 divides p. Now if 3 divides p then we can put p equal to 3 into something. Obviously if 3 divides p, 3 is a factor of p then we can put p as 3 into something that something I will call that as m where m is any integer. Now p equal to 3. Now I am making use of this equation number 1 which I got by squaring this. So from 1 I have p square equal to 3 into q square. So I will put the value of p as 3m here. So 3m square equal to 3 into q square. So remove the square here 9m square equal to 3 into q square. So we can cut a 3 common factor here. So 3m square equal to q square. Now see just as we got a 3 as a common uh, factor here, so 3 was a factor of p square, 3 divided p square, here 3 divides q square. 
therefore we have obtained that 3 divides q square now similar to this if 3 divides q square then 3 divides q now this is the second part of the theorem now see the two blocks which I have made here I will call, call this as equation number 2 and call this as statement number 3 so from 2 and 3 3 divides P and 3 divides Q so 3 divides or we can say 3 is a common factor of P and Q so 3 divides P and 3 divides Q so 3 divides both P and Q so 3 is a common factor but according to our condition we said that the HCF of P and Q is 1 so there is no other common divisor now this is a contradiction this contradicts the assumption that P and Q are co prime so our assumption is wrong this is a contradiction therefore our assumption is wrong and whenever our assumption is wrong we get the reciprocal result what did we assume root 3 is rational therefore root 3 is irrational so that completes the proof of this important theorem of irrational numbers likewise if you get root 5 then 3 will be replaced by 5 everywhere and you can prove that root 5 is irrational and similar proofs can be done using this important theorem for more videos on irrational numbers keep sharing the videos and keep watching the channel